of a deep brain tune-up. Everyone needs a tune-up from time to time. Our houses, our vehicles, even our electronics need a little bit of maintenance from time to time. So why wouldn't your brain, right? Today I'd like to focus on your brain and maybe we can pull out some things that aren't doing you any good and maybe put in some things that will do you some good, okay? So why don't we take a look at that brain of yours? Would you mind if I just take a look at your brain? So let me grab a little light just for a real quick little peek. So if you could just sit still for me. Just want to take a look at it. How it sits inside your skull here. cerebrum, but that's okay. That's really what we'll focus on today anyway. The brainstem and the cerebellum are very important, of course, but not as much for this particular application. Um, you know, I think I'd be able to look at it a little bit better if I were to take it out real quick. Would that be okay? Would you mind if I just looked at your brain a little bit? It makes my job a little easier. It won't hurt. It's completely painless. Right? Okay. You just let me know if you feel uncomfortable at all and we can put it right back in. are certainly in need of a tune-up. This looks like a brain that hasn't had too much maintenance lately. So this is a visual representation of your brain. Now let's take a little bit of a deeper look at it, shall we? So what we are holding here this representation is for the cerebrum. Now there are three main parts of the brain. And the brain as a whole is 60% fat. And all of our thoughts, all of our feelings, all these signals are all electricity. So basically, what's powering us is a three pound ball of fat with lightning running through it. The amount of electricity that is generated by the brain can power a light bulb, actually. There's a lot going on in the brain. Now, in addition to the cerebrum, there's also the cerebellum, or the little brain, that is back behind it. We also have the brainstem as well. Your cerebrum mostly deals with sensory information, speech, reasoning, emotions, fine motor control, things of that nature. Your cerebellum is mostly for coordination, maintaining your posture, and balance. While your brainstem connects everything to the spinal cord, and it also helps with automatic functions like breathing, your temperature, and your heart rate. 
So on our brain here, it is made up of two hemispheres divided by this sulcus or this deep groove here. This is known as the medial longitudinal fissure. It separates the right and the left hemispheres and they are connected by a little spot called the corpus callosum. So each side works together and really everything works together. But there are some things that are governed more on one side than the other. For example, on the right side, this controls a lot more of your creativity and a little bit more of your artistic and perhaps musical abilities, as well as your spatial ability. Your left side mostly deals with math, writing, comprehension, things of that nature. There are a couple of spots that are very specific as well. We have the Bracas and Wernicke area. These deal with language, speech. We also have four different lobes of the brain. There are, of course, other things going on like the sensory strip, the motor strip, what have you, but there are four main areas. We have the frontal area. We have the temporal, which is more underneath at the sides. The parietal is above that. And the occipital at the back. The frontal area of the brain which you may hear of when people talk about your brain not being fully formed until about 25. Depends on the person, though. This is the area that deals a lot with our personality, our emotions, judgment, problem solving. It's said that if one injures this area of the brain, they can become a completely different person. This is also where a lot of intelligence, concentration, self-awareness is located, as well as speech, both spoken and written speech, as well as body movement with the motor strip in there. Now with the parietal lobes, This helps to interpret language, as well as touch, pain, and temperature with the sensory strip. We also have the interpretation of signals in the vision, hearing, motor, sensory, and memory as well. The occipital at the back deals primarily with your vision, more specifically color, light, and movement, right back in here. And the temporal at the very sides and underneath here, this deals with understanding language with the Wernicke area. It deals a little bit with smell recognition, also music, memory, hearing, sequencing, and organization. So there's a lot going on primarily in the frontal and temporal and parietal lobes. And the occipital helps us mostly with vision. Now there are some deep structures in the brain as well. We have the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the thalamus, the basal ganglia, and the limbic system. 
Now, the hypothalamus is more for your autonomic nervous system. Things like regulating temperature, a little bit with hormones, as well as things like hunger or sleep. The pituitary gland controls your endocrine glands, and it responds to stress. Your pineal gland is mostly for sleep. This is what helps produce melatonin, and it helps regulate your circadian rhythm, as well as your internal clock. The thalamus is known as a relay station. It also helps with pain sensation, attention, alertness, and memory as well. The basal ganglia is mostly for fine motor movement. So for example, one that has Parkinson's disease has problems with the basal ganglia and that shows in their movement. Lastly, the limbic system is more for emotions and learning and memory. Memory is kind of a larger beast. There are three types of memory. We have short-term memory, which is located more in the prefrontal cortex. We have long-term memory, which is more in the hippocampus on the temporal lobe. And skill memory, like the kind of memory you need to tie your shoes, for example, works with the cerebellum underneath here and the basal ganglia, and they work together in order to do those little skill memory bits. Now for you, we are going to be tackling a little bit to do with the frontal lobe. the parietal lobe, and the temporal lobes. Now, don't worry, this is just a visual representation. We won't actually be putting any pins in your brain at all. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be cleaning house a little bit. So we're going to take out some things, we're going to put some things in, and we're going to give you a nice little tune-up here, okay? Now let's go ahead and flip your brain over here. And there's a lot going on in here. So we are going to clear some of this out. I'm going to get some little tweezers here. And we've already had something fall out immediately. Let's open this up. Ah, first thing. So, we have worry. Worry is our first bit to get rid of. So we're going to take that away. Some worries are important, but over-worrying about things doesn't help, it doesn't change our circumstances, so we're going to put away some of that worry. And what do we have here? Ah. We have catastrophization right here, and this may be the tendency to make things much bigger than they are, and sometimes we don't know any better, and everything feels like the world is coming in on us, but we do want to try to look at the bigger picture or take a step back. Oftentimes, most things are not actually as big as we think they are. And what do we have? Oh, here 
we have bitterness. Bitterness does not help anyone. So we're going to take that out and put that away. is a big one. Self-hatred. This one is not useful for really anybody. And oftentimes the things that we feel self-hatred for are for things we would never feel negatively towards another person for having. Whether it's minor things like missing appointments or assignments or it's larger things like not being able to meet your goals you don't really have any need for this one so we're going to go ahead and throw that away Anger serves a purpose, as do all emotions. Emotions are just signals, they're just messages. But too much anger does not serve to help us and only serves to hinder us. So we're going to take all this excess here. We're going to get rid of that. Okay. Envy and jealousy are two different things, but depending on the person, envy can be more poisonous, and envy is also something that, while valid, doesn't really serve us much. A little bit might help motivate us but it also may cause resentment as well, and bitterness, and we don't want that. So we're going to take this little slip of envy. We're going to get rid of it. Let's see. We're going to take this out just for the moment, but we'll put that back some of the bulk that your brain needs. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, this is a big one. We have shame. Now, shame is something that can be useful if we've done something bad and it helps us learn, but too much does not help us, and oftentimes we feel shame even when there's nothing to be ashamed about or for things that really don't garner the shame we feel. So we're going to take some of this excess and we're going to put it away. And it looks like we have exhaustion. This would be more mental exhaustion. So 
So when we stress and we worry about things, we make ourselves much more fatigued and tired. It's harder for us to get good sleep. So we are going to try to reduce some of that exhaustion. It doesn't help us, doesn't make us better people. So some of this self-inflicted exhaustion by worrying and being generally stressed without any break, we're going to take some of this away. We're going to pull out discord, discord between ourselves and other people, discord in our lives. We're going to take that out. Mental paralysis is something that some people experience much more than others, namely those with ADHD tend to experience a lot of mental paralysis where one knows they need to do something or they want to do something, but they just cannot make themselves do it. Or this may also be for those who tend to spiral as well. They have spiraling thoughts, bad thoughts that just keep going in a cycle, in a loop, and they're stuck in it. They're paralyzed. And this is something that can be tricky to get out of. It really can. Sometimes your brain just gets wrapped around something so tightly, and we're going to do what we can to get rid of this one. It's not helpful, and we don't need it. We have only a couple left. Self-sabotage. This one, I'm certain that most people have experienced before. And it's something that's a little, it's a little covert. It's a sneaky one. Because sometimes we don't even realize that we are sabotaging ourselves. Whether it's something minor, like not pursuing an opportunity, that we may be qualified for or that we really want because we think we don't deserve it or we won't get it anyway. Or it might be things like lashing out at people and saying knowingly hurtful things just to, just to ruin the relationship. So this is something that's very harmful to not only ourselves but it can be to other people as well. don't need this. This can be like stress, but it's more the sludgy type of stress. The ones that make us feel much more fatigued and foggy the more we think about it. The more it spins in our brain, the heavier and stickier it gets. Like, I 
like a deep, sticky mud that, as you step in it, it sucks you in deeper. Turmoil is definitely not something that'll help us. So we're gonna get rid of this one. And then I think you will be just about cleaned out. Get rid of that. So let's grab this one right on top. Oh, we have disappointment. Disappointment can also be useful for our growth, but this is for things that we cannot change or things we've been disappointed about for a long time. If it's not helping us at all, then we're going to take away some of that. Yeah. Looks like most of that is gone, except I do see Miscommunication. This is a big one. This can be with ourselves and not allowing ourselves to hear or tell ourselves that maybe we need a break or maybe there's something we need, something we want. Or miscommunication with others, not telling them what we need, what we want, what hurts us, what we want to see. So, we're going to get rid of some of this. And that should be everything. So, we're going to take a little bit of this bulk matter here, this neutral matter. And push it back into place. We're going to go in with some tools and we're going to do a little bit of tuning up before we put some good qualities back in. Now I have a few different tools and what we're doing is we are rearranging things a little bit, opening up the space and Allowing your brain to accept these, these better qualities for you. Sometimes even when we know that something is good for us, we just can't bring ourselves to allow it or accept it. So this little tune-up here helps to reduce that rejection almost. Okay? So, I just have some very simple it won't hurt at all. It might be a little uncomfortable. Growth and change generally is uncomfortable, but it should be relatively painless. So let's take a look in your brain. So let's see. I think we can.
making room, rearranging some of the some of the bulk. Now, what I mean by bulk is this neutral matter, which is like our memories and information we store, background processes that are neither positive nor negative. They're just, they're just there. Just like when you turn on your computer, you don't realize how many things are running in the background in order to make it run. making sure a little discomfort is normal but we don't want to push you too far or that really that could impede the whole process I think if we, we can put a little bit back here Great little pocket right there. That'll be wonderful to put some of our some of our good qualities in. Now, when we do put your brain back in, it won't necessarily look prettier but it'll definitely run much better for you. And you may notice that after some time, it starts to revert back maybe into those old patterns or it gets a little bit sluggish again. And that's when we need to do another tune-up. See, these things aren't just one and done. They're things you have to keep Unfortunately, upkeep is a big part that we didn't really sign up for, but we have to do anyway to keep ourselves healthy. But luckily, I can do this all for you. Sometimes it's harder to do it by yourself, especially when you don't realize or recognize what it is exactly you need to let go of and what you need to invite in. So, I can do this for you. Eventually, you will be able to do this yourself. You'll be able to recognize the signs a lot better. Things won't get so so out of control, so tangled. We have more than enough room to put some good qualities in there. Okay. Seems to be everything. Now let's take a look. Good. 
These are all great qualities that maybe you just need a little bit more of. Maybe you just need to be a little bit more reminded of. These are all some very good things that we can put inside your brain. Now I'd like to put a little bit of clarity into your brain as well. Just going to tuck that in. There. That will be clarity for yourself. That will be clarity for other people, other situations. Yes, I think going along with that will do a little bit of acceptance. Now, some people find acceptance to be equivalent to surrender or giving up. But acceptance goes hand in hand with clarity of realizing how things are and working with it rather than against it. is also a good one to go along with it. This one is balance. Balance and moderation in all things. There is such thing as too much of a good thing, and we need balance. We need little bits of calm and urgency. We need little bits of peace and stress. Keep us running, keep us growing, keep us moving forward. This one. This one's being a little tricky, actually. we have our little trifecta of acceptance and clarity and balance. These all work together quite well for you. And let's go ahead and put in a little bit of peace here. I think peace will be quite good for you. Maybe a little bit of joy. Joy is always a good one to have. Deep inside there. And let's do a little bit of belief. Belief in yourself and other people. People that love you. And let's do a little bit of mirth. It's always great to have humor. It helps us cope with things. It helps bring us a little bit of joy. It brings us closer to other people. It helps us not focus so much on our mistakes or our accidents. going to pop in a little bit of tolerance. This will be self-tolerance and tolerance for other people. Now, sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but oftentimes we are doing our best and other people are doing their best. I have a very special little line that I like to say, which is doing the best we can with what we have. And tolerance for people that just aren't on their A-game that day, that are going through it. And tolerance for yourself as well. 
are going to pop this in. People are just trying to live their lives the best they can given their circumstances. And I think most people could, could stand a little bit more tall. some honesty as well. Honesty to yourself, honesty for other people. This is a good one. And I think and humility. Humility is one of my favorite qualities. And humility, or being humbled, being grounded, these are all quite wonderful emotions with the right circumstances. If one were to stand at the edge of a river and realize that these waters have been flowing for thousands of years, same position and looked at the same water and felt the same way that you did. That's a humble feeling. If you look out on the world and realize that everyone is living a separate narrative, that they are the main character in their own story and you are only a side character, that is a sort of humble. When people realize that and everything is about them, and I am 100% someone who needs to work on that as well, then we are all part of a big, great thing. To feel small can sometimes be extremely frightening, but at the same time, we are connected to everything. The air, the earth, the water, to our people around us. There's this concept of, of only having a few connections, I think it's six or so, six or fewer connections to literally anyone else in the world. That is a very humble feeling. So, humility can be quite an awe-inspiring feeling, and it gives a little bit of peace, it gives a little bit of purpose, in that perhaps maybe we don't all have a very specific purpose, but we are all part of something, something big, something great. We are about chock full We've got a few more qualities that we want to we want to press in there. We have health, being mindful of our own health, doing what we can to take care of ourselves. We have appreciation, that's a good one, for ourselves, for the world around us, for the people around us. Appreciation is always an excellent quality to have. A little bit of this book matter. And lastly, we have love. Love is one of the greatest things that humans have. And it makes the world go round, so we could all use a little bit more. A little bit more love. And then we're going to take a little bit of our neutral matter. Just a little bit. And we're going to seal it up. Now everything is tucked. 
and it's not coming back out. So, and now all that's left is to put your brain back. Are you ready to get your brain back? When I put in your brain, you might feel a little off balance, almost. You might feel a little disoriented, and this is normal. You've gone around with some pretty heavy stuff lately, and almost as if you get a bunch of hair cut off and your head all of a sudden feels very light. have gotten you used to carrying them around. So when we replace them with things that are a little lighter, a little easier to bear, you might feel a little... a little unsteady. But this is normal, and just like with the heavy things, you'll get used to it. You'll adapt. That's the thing about humanity is we are incredibly equipped to adapt. Put this back in. Now, I want you to take care that it doesn't get that heavy again, okay? That was a lot that you had in there to help the process a little. The best thing to allow your brain to process things and gain a greater acceptance for them is sleep. That allows your brain to run through everything uninhibited without your thoughts or emotions getting in the way. So I am just going to... Can get a little bit of sleep. In the morning, I imagine you will feel much better, okay? Right, so I'm just going to you in here real quick and steady your brain. And we're gonna go deep inside, right in the middle. A little bit darker, and I think you will find yourself a very restful and restorative sleep. Thank you so much for coming here to get your brain tuned up. I wish you the very best. I hope you have a whale of a day and a 